The first plants that we're going to look at are all crosses of Habanata and Ahicharapita. This cross was selected to integrate a trait for capsaicinoid reduction coming from Habanata. And so in Habanata, I think it's a pun one mutant, which knocks out the whole capsaicinoid pathway and all the fruit are non-pungent when this mutant allele is there. And it is recessive, so you have to have two copies. So Habanata is a very attractive parent with very glossy skin and it has an allele for reduced carotenoid content, right? And so that's the first thing that we're looking at here is you'll see these fruit, they're not that typical dark green, they're light green. And so we have a reduced number of chlorophyll cells, right? You gotta think back to bio one here. And actually chlorophyll cells turn into chromoplasts and chromoplasts are where the carotenoids accumulate, right? And so if you start out with a low density of chlorophyll cells, you end up with a low density of chromoplast cells and you end up with light colored fruit. So you can have light colored red, which is pink, which is the target here. Uh, you can have light yellow, which is kind of like a sulfur yellow. And you can have light orange. And I think that's it. And then there's alleles for all white fruit, but that's a different thing. So that's just an upright fruit with a little bit of point and it's squat and it's got a bulge in it. Fruit like this aren't going to be too exciting, so what we're going to do is go look for the fruit that are a little bit larger and have a bit more of an attractive shape. So that's one here. So it's a little bit larger, a bit bigger of an architecture, still have that light green, so this is going to be a pink. Um, we have things like this. So this is very squat and very wide. It's kind of got that UFO shape. And then we see kind of nondescript things. So this kind of goes back to that first plant. It's just a nondescript kind of teardrop shape. And same here. And so we are working with an F4. And so that's what we expect is some stability. And then we get some oddballs, right? So we're still upright, still yellow. But these are a bit more pointed, so they don't have that squat trait to them. Right? So that UFO shape, that's probably going to be a selection um, simply based on the crop that's on that plant combined with the shape and hopefully the flavor will be there too but we can't quite test for that now. So we I think we switched families here yep so we switched families two back uh, and then we're looking at Habanata by Icharpita and so this guy you'll notice is dark green right and so it does not have that reduced concentration of chlorophyll cells. Right, still has a pretty good fruit set. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of other plants. They all tend to be kind of small. Probably not gonna select any of these. Maybe that guy, probably not. Nothing too inspiring. So I can tell this last family we're looking at, the attempt here was to get back to that Ahicharpita phenotype. So we're gonna take a step back and look at one more family here. All right, so we walk back to look at the other side of this double row here. So this is going to be Habanata by Charpita. Again, this is that light green, so we're talking probably a light pink or maybe a light yellow here, um, but on a much bigger plant. So that might be a selection. We'll have to see what, uh, what goes on here. And uh, a very similar phenotype, both in fruit size, shape, architecture, color, all that. And then we've got, I don't know, kind of a non-distinct, um, probably heterozygous kind of for a bulge in the fruit length. Nothing too inspiring. But then we get down here, right? And so the whole, well, one of the goals of this whole project was to make a pink ahi charpita. And so I think that's what this is heading to. So it's still not perfect. You can see we kind of have that restriction around the top of the fruit. That's got to be some kind of genetic trait. And so it's not perfect, but we're getting pretty close. And then there's just some other stuff. Yep, more upright. And you can see again, we still got that restriction around the, uh, the top of the fruit by the pedestal. So if we want that pink charpita, more work to be done, but that's all in the fun of the game. At this point, we've just got a whole bunch of selections to work through for quality and size and fun and all that. Hey guys, if you want to support the channel, uh, recommend you buy my pepper variety called Tropical Tiger. It's a capsicum bacatum, about 100, 120 days to fruit. It's across a sugar rush peach stripe with a proprietary male from my breeding program. And so it's essentially 
an improved and hotter version of Sugar Rush Stripey. Uh, certainly it's got better plant architecture, it's got better disease resistance, and it sets more fruit. And it's absolutely epic for hot sauces. It's got this fresh tropical citrus flavor, hence the Tropical Tiger, and it just sets massive numbers of fruit. So come about two, three, four weeks, I'm going to be making gallons of hot sauce. So if you want to support me and you want to support the open pepper breeding project indirectly, uh, please buy some uh, Tropical Tiger F1 seeds. You can search for it on Etsy or you can find them on pepperbreeding.com where you can get not only the Tropical Tiger F1 seeds, but also seeds to all the populations that we're working with here. So please support us, support pepper breeding, and uh, buy some F1 seeds. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, so we're back at the second double row here. Uh, if you're wondering what's between the two community project rows, it's actually a bunch of young sunflowers. So they got absolutely drenched and rained on with Hurricane Debbie. Uh, but they're for my wedding this winter, so if you want to support me, buy some Tropical Tiger seeds. Just kidding. I won't always be this obnoxious, I promise. Anyways, so for the next row, we're looking at Shiro Roja by Scarlet Chili. So that's one parent crossed to Ahi Char Pita. Okay? And so we've got the, just kind of the typical upright fruit shape. You know, small, upright. We got a lot of that from Char Pita really had trouble kind of recovering that really circular globular fruit shape and so I think probably at some point when we get a nice small pink fruit we'll have to do a back cross to Sharpita um, but I'm trying not to obsess too much with those kind of first program objectives we'll get there you know we'll get a really nice pink Sharpita at some point out of here but I just want to focus on finding really good varieties and so that's why with the other stuff we were just looking for good fruit set, good size, something attractive that people will like, no issues with disease, um, you know, what they call a frugal feeder, something that grows better than the rest of the plants given a really kind of consistent uh, fertilization regime. So nothing too interesting there, that's why I didn't really focus in on anything. So this is one that I think will probably end up being a selection just based on the the right amount of fruit that I'm seeing here. So this is also Habanada by Charpita. And you can see here that we've got that really pretty glossy fruit and that comes from Habanada. But that's just something to keep in mind that we've got some really pretty fruit coming out of these Habanada crosses, much more than Shira Roja and everything else. All right, so we're gonna duck down and kind of look under these plants in the shady side. So these are crosses with I think this is Shira Roja by SC, and then on the other side, on the outside, is um, Pink Habanero Lawn. Again, both not my favorite parents, but we're actually getting pretty good fruit set out of this family. And so I don't know offhand who selected this, but man, they did a really good job because we're getting fruit all the way at the bottom, right? So we have the first bifurcation, no fruit. That's kind of standard. There's a lot too, too much competition. First flowers tend not to set, right? So, but after that first bifurcation, the second, the third, the fourth, tertiary, all that, we have a really good fruit set. And so I think this is going to be a selection here. And then we've got some other stuff that's very similar, but, you know, smaller fruit. So it's easier to pick bigger fruit. And if you get just the same number of fruit, you get a bigger yield. So I think that's probably where we're going with those families. And again, very similar kind of pendant fruit. Nothing too special. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that update. We'll probably have another one in about two weeks with some ripe fruit, so stay tuned for that. And again, if you want to support me and support the channel indirectly, I uh, really, really suggest you go buy some Tropical Tiger Scenes. I appreciate it. Pretty much all the profits go to me, so it's super helpful to pay for all this garden stuff, the fertilizer, the land, and everything else. Thanks, guys. It's always a pleasure. Talk soon.